Hey my friends, how's it going? It's Ultimus, and today I wanted to go over some current gearing situations for Warriors. Uh, specifically for Warriors, I, I do want to make an emphasis on that. This might work for your class, and this might be something that you might want to look in for whatever spec and class you play. But I know as of right now, this is current best-in-slot stuff for Warriors, and so I thought I'd make a video about it. Real quick, just addressing it for those of you who might be playing Warriors, aren't aware of it, or you might be gearing up a Warrior towards the end of this X-Pack. Um, I was debating doing just a full-on gearing video, but this seems a little irrelevant at this point since we're just about, probably about halfway through this last PvP season, I'm not going to lie, so it just seems kind of pointless at this one. Uh, so instead of that, we'll just go over kind of briefly looking at what we got equipped and then talking about the big one, which are these a ring and the t uh, trinket. So, of course, all of the rest of our gear is best of slot, and you can pretty much copy and paste this off of any Arms Warrior and even Fury Warriors um, arena logs, or not arena logs, uh, battle.net page if you go check it on the 3v3 boards. But we have our set helmet, our choker of cruelty, which is the critical and mastery plus the mastery enchant. We have the set shoulders, we have the cruelty cloak, which same stats, also enchanted with mastery and speed. Set chest piece shirt and tabard that are irrelevant. We have the bracers, which are the cruelty ones as well, also uh, haste and mastery. Mastery is your best in slot go to stat for warriors, simply because it flat out increases your damage of mortal strike, colossus smash, and execute, flat out. So that's a flat 165% buff for myself right now without being in any other uh, in a party, just self buffed. Um, obviously our two-headed weapon, which is irrelevant whichever one you take since weapons are no longer really relevant as far as which type you take. So take the sword, mace, axe, whichever you prefer. Just make sure you get Mark of Bleeding Hollow. Uh, we have our set gloves, our girdle of victory, which is versatility mastery. We have our non-set pants. That's an important one. Keep that in mind. And then, of course, we have our boots of cruelty, which is crit and mastery. Now, what I want to talk about here is the rings and the trinket. Now, we have our Season 3 Warmongering Gladiator Signet of Cruelty, which, of course, crit mastery with an enchant of mastery. And this is one that I thought was interesting, and I've seen a couple of the top-tier warriors using it, and a couple of them don't. After doing a few BGs and some arenas with it, I found I like it a lot more. Picking up the crafted ring. Uh, this worked out pretty easily for me since I am a jewel crafter. I was able to fo get this relatively quickly and cost effectively. To get it all the way buffed up, it uh, cost me a little bit of gold just to buy all of the mats for it. Um, just the, the fell and all those things. And I had a bunch of bloods laying around so it wasn't too bad. Um, but you want to take this ring instead of your other ring. Uh, there is... Let's go down here real quick and check it out. Because for a while, me and a couple of the Warriors were hanging on to our Season 2 Ring of Cruelty because we wanted the Mastery. Since the other ring you pick up, if I'm not mistaken here, is Haste Multi-Strike. And again, you don't really, I mean, other than that, you have Multi-Strike Bonus Armor, Crit Multi-Strike, Haste Bonus Armor, Haste Multi-Strike. There, there's really nothing else that really you want. Uh, the Crit Ring, maybe, but... It's not that big of a deal. You want more mastery than anything else. So, what we've been doing as a, a couple of warriors and myself, what I've noticed is we've foregone uh, getting the PvP ring all together and gone for the glowing Talonite ring of the Harmonious, which is versatility mastery. Now, versatility, if you can remember, is a straight damage buff and a damage reduction. Increases damage and healing done by 11.1% with my current versatility and decreases damage taken by 5.50%. So, uh, with that, we're getting two stats on our ring here with our just flat damage buffs as well as a little bit of damage reduction, which is nice. So, taking this one instead of any other ring, I'm finding after doing some decent amount of testing with Fury, with Arms, turns out to be probably our best in slot. Now, I don't know if this is the case for other classes. You might want to look into this for your class if you play a healer, an agility class, whatever it is. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I've also done the same thing with my Death Knight. So you can pick, purchase this ring fairly cheap. Upgrading it is where it gets a little bit pricey just to pick up the um, the Fell. I think it's the Fell Blight that you need for it. I cannot remember. Let's pull up our crafting section really quick here just so we're actually... Yeah, Fell Blight. Sweet! We know things. We're smart. Sometimes. Um, so basically, you're going to forge that ring. And sometimes the tricky thing is getting this right stats to proc. 
So if that's the case, you can always recrystallize it with this if you are a jewel crafter. Of course, you can just buy the ring itself off the uh, auction house before it gets too expensive. But you are looking for the Ring of the Harmonies, which is versatility and mastery. And then, of course, with these, you can upgrade them, all that stuff like that. You might even be able to find a fully upgraded one on the auction house or buy these to upgrade them. They're not too expensive right now because of oversaturation, which is kind of nice. Um, but I'm enjoying that a lot with just the mastery and the versatility as well. So consider giving that a go on your warrior. And then last but not least, uh, not only taking the Warmongering Gladiator's Insignia of Victory. Wow, that is a mouthful. Uh, which gives us the 389 versatility, plus, of course, uh, you have the proc, which is, gives you the chance for 1,104 strength for 20 seconds. It's a lot stronger than the on-use one. The The difference is you're getting a little more RNG dependent on it for how often it procs. It procs fairly often, though, so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but you just have less control over your burst, but at the same time, it can be kind of fun because it means your damage can spike pretty high pretty quickly and if the enemy healer or player that you're coming up against other DPS isn't ready for it, it can overwhelm them very, very quickly. So I'm a big fan of that. But the other trinket you might want to look out for is the Warmongering Gladiator's Accolade of Victory. Now this one's a little tricky simply because you can't buy it. If you go back over here to our vendor, you'll notice you can't buy it. You have to get it from Ashram. So that can get a little bit tricky because you get the Ashran box from uh, the Victory over the Warlord, uh, the enemy Warlord, and then you get the one big box for completing the events plus the Warlord kill, and it has a chance to proc from that box. The only other badge you can get here is the one with Mastery, just straight Mastery, which isn't bad considering it also increases versatility on use. But your best in slot is going to be the Warmongering Gladiator's Accolade of Victory if you're trying to stack that mass amount of mastery. If you are unable to get that trinket as well, then the Warmongering Gladiator's Badge of Victory is your best bet. Because Strength is still one of our most important stats as a warrior. Also increases versatility on use. You definitely want to make sure you have two PvP trinkets simply for that 15% less damage from other players. Very, very important, especially for playing a warrior since we have such little damage mitigation and defensives as it is. But uh, that's really all I wanted to go over in this video for those of you who might not have been aware. And if you don't play a warrior and you're aware of it but want to check it out, maybe look into it for your class as well. It's always kind of cool. When you get to the end of any expansion like this, it feels like the entire meta changes and everything just kind of goes balls to the wall, if that makes sense. And people are willing to try more crazy things, which is always kind of fun. So, at least from my perspective, it's kind of cool. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend any PvE trinkets in PvP as well, unless you're goofing around in battlegrounds with them, but rated arenas, definitely not. So, give that a go. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I would love to be as helpful as possible. Definitely working on putting together and considering doing an Arms Warrior guide video just to go over the basic PvP rotations for Arms Warrior talents, glyphs, all that kind of stuff what you want to do to basically play an arms warrior and then take it from there, at least on your end. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you next time.